doing today, people? It's your boy, Cozy Rich. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Rich Sports Report. I wasn't able to bring you guys an episode last week, so we're going to, you know, do it up this week. I want to jump right into things because last time we spoke, I'm pretty sure I, I started off the episode talking about MLB and the baseball season in the World Series between the Astros, the Houston Astros, and the Atlanta Braves. I want to give you an update on how that went. The Atlanta Braves ended up beating the Houston Astros four games to two in the World Series to become the World Series champions, the champions of the 2020-2021 baseball season. Congratulations to the Atlanta Braves, but that's all the baseball I'm talking for about today. So, on to real sports. We're going to start talking about NFL. You guys weren't able, we weren't able to have this discussion last week, but this week I want to talk about it real briefly. Henry Ruggs, wide receiver of the Raiders, was involved in a um, DUI car accident that ended up, you know, taking the life of that person he ended up hitting. So uh, to give you all a little synopsis, Henry Ruggs is a wide receiver on the Las Vegas Raiders. First round pick of them from Alabama. So you know that man had it all, and now it's all taken away from him because... Two weeks ago, he got, he ended up going 156 miles an hour on a Las Vegas residential lane in a residential area, and he ended up smashing into the back of a woman's car, and as a result of doing that, when he did that, he ended up pinning this person into their seat, and they weren't able to get out, along with their dog. So um, because of that, the, the car eventually caught on fire, and she later just got engulfed in the in the flames and she unfortunately passed but with all that being said Henry Ruggs is officially out of the league the Raiders have released him made statements the NFL has made statements and he is now facing numerous charges from gun possession to DUI to vehicular manslaughter all that all that I'm not a lawyer but I can tell you that he's facing at least 40 years in prison for all of this so to go from a first round pick coming out of Alabama less than a year later to being possibly locked up for the majority of your life, I don't wish that on anyone. Um, prayers to, to the woman whose life he took. Prayers to Henry Ruggs and his family because Lord knows what they're going with, going through as well. And I don't wish this situation on anybody. But um, I'll keep you guys updated on that and provide provide you updates when they become available. Next, I want to talk about, you know, Odell Beckham. My man Odell hasn't been having, you know, the greatest year or greatest tenure with the Cleveland Browns ever since he got traded. I don't think they've been utilizing him correctly. And neither does he because his dad, essentially, his dad and LeBron James basically made made some statements, put some clips together to basically show the Browns that they're not utilizing him correctly. And as a result, last week they released Odell Beckham, placed him on waivers. And today, Tuesday, November 8th, I'm pretty sure it is, he is now a free agent, in, or November 9th, he is now a free agent and free to sign with anyone in the league. And Bill Belichick, if you watch this show, go get Odell Beckham. That's all I'm going to say. Go get Odell because we need that man. We need a deep threat. We need a playmaking wide receiver because we have everything else. The defense is looking good for New England. We're coming off four straight wins. We're now five and four. We're looking good. We're looking good this year. So I think Odell could be a real boost to our offense and help Mac Jones, who's looking pretty good himself, keep improving. I also want to touch on the Steelers. The Steelers have won four straight games as well. And why am I touching upon the Steelers? Because Big Ben Roethlisberger was looking sorry to start this year. They're my Super Bowl picks to come out of the AFC. And they're now 5-3 and three in one game behind the Ravens for the AFC North. So I only say that because I just wanted to say I told you so. My predictions aren't wrong. They're coming back strong. The Steelers are gelling. They got Najee Harris at the running back. And Ben Roethlisberger is finally playing up to his ability. And they are poised to make a run. Their defense is highly touted. They got a lot of playmakers on that side of the ball. So we're going to see what happens with the Steelers, and I hope they're able to continue this. But lastly, I just want to talk about the Titans. They just beat the brakes off the Los Angeles Rams, who I had as, you know, probably the top team in the league behind the Cardinals. And they just waxed that ass last week. Derrick Henry is now out for, you know, four to six weeks, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure it is. And Adrian Peterson, a.k.a. All Day, 
aka Mr. Touchdown, aka Mr. MVP, is now on the Titans doing his thing. He's back. I wouldn't say he's better than ever, but it feels good. To, it just feels good to see AP back in the back in the football uniform. But yeah, the Titans are seven and two. They're the top seed in the AFC right now. They're playing the best in the AFC right now. I, I really don't see anyone beating them right now. So with that, we're gonna jump right into the NBA. And let's touch on the Warriors real quick. People, the Warriors are 9 and 1. The Warriors are 9 and 1. They went from not making the playoffs last year to being 9 and 1 in their first 10 games this year, and that's without Klay Thompson, that's without James Wiseman, and that's without Jonathan Kaminga. Those are three players that can make a difference on their team, and they don't have them, and they're still pissing on teams without them. Why? Because Steph Curry is doing Steph Curry things. Last night, this man dropped 50 points on Trey Young, the wannabe Steph Curry. He dropped 50 points on the wannabe Steph Curry, Trey Young. He showed him how he really does this. So I, I had the Warriors highly touted coming into the season. I believe this was going to be, you know, a makeup year for the last two years without Clay. When he gets back, I think they're just going to pick up right where they left off, and they're poised to make a, a title run. Now, it is very early in the season, 10 games. There's another 71 games left, 72 games left. So with that being said, anything could happen from injuries to suspensions to Lord knows what. But I just wanted to, I just wanted to touch on the Warriors because they're playing as a high – they're playing on all levels right now. They're, they're a highly oiled machine, and they're the best team in the league. Now – I want to touch on the Celtics as well because we're in Boston. This is a, a Boston-based podcast, and I'm a Boston Celtics fan. And ever since Marcus Smart made those comments about Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown passing the ball, getting more people involved in the fourth quarter and such, they are 2-1. and one. And that one loss was to Luka Doncic on a buzzer beater to end the game, and I don't even blame that on the team because he was triple team. So really, they should be 3-0, and oh, but it is what it is. Jalen Brown is now out one to two weeks. So it's on Jason Tatum and his inefficient scoring to lead us to the promised land. And I feel like he can do that because he's finally getting adjusted to the ball, the Spalding ball. He's finally feeling comfortable, and he's been playing better as of late. So I expect Jason Tatum to drop buckets and redeem himself while JB is gone. And I also want to touch on Russell motherfucking Westbrook, Mr. Triple Double. He's almost averaging a triple-double this year. He's averaging 19 points, 9 rebounds, 9 assists. But my man's averaging like four turnovers a game, and the turnovers he does have are always in the fourth quarter when the game matters. LeBron is out for a week or two right now, so it's Russell Westbrook, Melo, and AD holding down the fourth for the Lakers. And they almost lost last night to the Charlotte Bobcat or Charlotte Hornets led by LaMelo because Russell Westbrook had seven turnovers, four in the fourth quarter. How do you do that? I don't understand. He's getting paid $45 mil a year to, to do what he does. I wish I was getting paid that much because I could turn the ball over. I could do that. I could shoot terribly. He's shooting 41% from the field. Not from three, but from the field. I just don't see the Lakers. And all you Lake Show fans, all you Lakers fans, all you L.A. fans, I think y'all need to switch to the Clippers this year because I don't even think LeBron can bring Russell to the finals. And that man can turn water into wine really when it comes to basketball so i just want to keep you know i want to keep watching russell westbrook see how he plays the rest of the year because i i respect his hustle i respect his tenacity i respect how hard he goes every day in the games but the way he's playing very inefficient turnover prone i i just don't see him being a championship point guard for the lakers and lastly I want to touch on John Morant because this man has been in the league for three years now and he deserves his motherfucking flowers. This man dropped 33 points last night on Monday versus the T-Wolves, and he is averaging 26 points, five rebounds, seven – no, five assists, five rebounds, seven assists, and 1.5 steals a game. This man is really an all-star this year. I definitely will say he's a top-five point guard this year. He's showing out. There's nothing he can't do right now. He's very efficient. 48 and a half from the field, 38 from three. He's looking good. I would start a team around him in Memphis. They're, they're looking good as well. So I just wanna I just wanted to touch on John Moran because his dunks, his handles, his his playmaking ability, he's must see TV. And I love watching that that kid on the on the court. 
and I can't wait to see how the rest of the season goes for him. So he deserves his flowers, and I just wanted to touch on that real quick. But um, with that being said, nothing, not, nothing much really, really happened in the in sports the last week. I, I, I gave y'all the important things. Um, one one thing that's notable: Celtics are interested in inquiring about Ben Simmons. I don't know what that means. All I know is that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown better not be included in any package for Ben Simmons because that is a downgrade. Nigga can't shoot. Yeah, nigga can't shoot. Why would we trade anyone for a nigga that can't shoot and a point guard and can't free throws? Waste of time. But with that being said, I want to say thank y'all for tuning in to the Rich Sports Report. This is another great episode. I love my fans. I love my people. We're going to bring the same content next week. We're going to bring the props back next week. And I hope y'all have a great week. And with that being said, y'all have a good one, and I'll see y'all next week. Love.